Okay, folks, so um, let's get started right now. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little about what we're going to be uh, covering today. Um, it's uh, going to be quite a, a marathon for us because we've never done anything like this. Um, and uh, the first thing I'll just ask to, for housekeeping purposes is to make sure everybody can hear my voice okay. So if you can, please just enter okay into the chat box so that I know that you can hear me well. And you can see me, actually. Anybody, anybody uh, hear me there? Can you enter into the chat there uh, if you can hear me or see me? Let me do this. Oh, that's to you. One moment. Okay, great, good. We've got it now. All right, oh, perfect. Okay, so listen, everybody, there's a little bit of a delay from when I speak to when you're typing it in, but I know that you can see me now, and so this is a good thing. Uh, what I want you to do is to, um, uh, when you have any questions, you can put it into that uh, same chat area there. Uh, we can't uh, an answer them in real time all the time because there's, there's a lot of things that we'll be doing here. Uh, but uh, thanks for the feedback. Uh, I know that we've got a good connection here. So, uh, so here's here's the agenda for today. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, first present a little bit of news, uh, Aqua Chi news, more recent news, and then um, there's going to be two segments with some uh, presentation slides. Uh, we're going to have uh, Michaela McAvoy, the co-owner of AquaChiFootBath.com, also a practitioner. Uh, talking to us a little bit, and uh, and then the uh, the last part, and this is the part that's going to uh, be uh, never before uh, accomplished, is uh, I'm actually going to dive in with uh, how to take care of every possible thing that you could think of with the Aqua Chi, and especially uh, for folks who um, you know have had their machines for a while, the things you can do to uh, bring your uh, modules. Uh, back into perfect uh, brand new condition uh, like doing a self rebuild things like that so there'll be uh, a lot of tips and that's going to be toward the end and finally I'm going to give you some resources throughout um, that you can download and we're going to uh, we're going to let you download those things including including a, uh, a detox guide which is a, a, an ebook that talks about different forms of detox. So, uh, lots on the plate today. So, let me look at our agenda here. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is cover uh, just one item of news that I think everybody would be real excited about. Um, and that's having to do with the research that's uh, been going on uh, within the last six months uh, with the Aqua Chi. Now, um, I'm going. What I'm going to do, rather than uh, uh, say say it again, I was on a radio program uh, a few months ago, and uh, I recorded uh, a snippet from that that explains uh, this research that's been done with the Aqua Chi, and I'd like to attempt to play that and see if we can get that in to the uh, webinar. So, just one moment. I'll go ahead and try to play that. I want to share one other piece of uh, research. It hasn't been shared publicly, so I think it's a, a good time on, on your program. Um, there, there was some research done with the Aqua Chi this year in, at the University of Tennessee. Uh, Mary, Marcy Purnell, a medical researcher, carried on some research with cancer cells. Um, and so what was done was uh, there were cancer cells in petri dishes to, to find out you know, the normal rate of growth of cancer cells. So uh, over seven days, 10,000 cells would grow to about 5 million cancer cells. Wow. And uh, what they did was they put uh, this, they did the same thing in a solution of treated water with the Aqua Chi. And what happened was the cancer uh, rate, the growth rate, was reduced by 90%. So uh, it, it only grew to 500,000 cells. So... Although that's growth, I mean, that shows a tremendous reduction. But even more interesting 
is they took the, uh, they, they wanted to see what happens with normal cells. So they took normal cells and put it into uh, the solution, the AquaChi treated water. And what they found was that there was actually an increase in, in healthy cells. So rat, they thought that it would reduce um, the cell growth just like it did in cancer cells, but it was actually the reverse. Huh. It, uh, it doubled the, uh, the healthy cell growth. And so it's just interesting, you know, to see that the different types of cells can be acted on in a different way. Now, one so of the things a, that... Okay, so uh, that was just a snippet about that there is research that's uh, going on that uh, isn't always in the public, but, uh, you know, for for this event, I wanted to share that with you <clears throat> because <clears throat> there's been also uh, research with the National Institute, Institute of Health uh, where a grant, actually that same woman, uh, Marcy, is trying to uh, get a grant from the NIH to do further uh, testing along these lines. But I think that just gives a, uh, although it is a uh, test, you know, in a test situation with cells in a Petri dish, um, you know, when you see that kind of divergence from the normal cancer cell rate to the reduced rate in a solution of aqua tea treated water, and I think that gives you some indication that there's real, very real things that are happening uh, when you're taking an aqua chi bath. There's a lots of lots of different uh, uh, beliefs about how it wor works, and you know uh, some some misinformation actually, you know, from other uh, makers and things like that. But um, the the fact is that it uh, it really does work. And after for over you know almost 15 years, uh, it's been in the market, and we've been there with it. So. Uh, unless we absolutely believed in what it was capable of, uh, we wouldn't be here with you today. So, um, in any case, let's uh, let me let me flip over, and we're going to talk a little about uh, a detox foot baths right now. I'm going to uh, put a, a slide up on or uh, share some slides with you. <clears throat> okay, so. This, we're just going to talk a little about detox foot baths, what they are and what, what they aren't, um, and uh, how the AquaChi is, in particular, uh, among the field of uh, these devices. So, um, there, there are two views about how these foot baths work. One view uh, is accurate, and the other is, well, not so accurate, okay? Um, the not so accurate view is something, goes something like this. You see a color chart that has a uh, series of colors on it, and each of those colors corresponds to what might be detoxified from your uh, parts of your body. You know, so for instance, uh, red might be blood clot material. Um, so that 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 I feel is uh, not an accurate view, only because it's so uh, simple. You know, uh, people are so complex. There's different, uh, so many different things that that go into a bath, including the water itself. So uh, again, this uses a color chart. Colors are related to organs, and the toxicity is released through the uh, feet. Now, the more accurate view in the way the aqua chi works is on a bioelectrical basis. The cells are all little batteries, and so by, get, by imparting a biocharge to the body, these cells are, are, are kicked into action, uh, assimilating and eliminating in a more um, effective way. So you can see like the battery is uh, charging here. This is the same idea in your body, okay? See the, uh, the cells there, they have negative charges around the, uh, around the cell, and these are like little batteries. Again, there's electrical charges around the cells. So, it, so by, by imparting that charge, you get an increased cellular function. And then, the, by normal means, you can carry out toxicity from the body in a more efficient way. So again, there it is, the battery recharging. Okay. Now, the, uh, the Aqua Chi is, is unique among uh, other foot baths in that years of testing was done before it was ever even released. And, uh, and testing was also done following the, uh, following the release of it. So here's a more recent test probably within the last few years. Uh, using seeds, uh, wheat seeds from the same stock, and we were we were looking at uh, an independent firm actually uh, looked at how these grew in different mediums of water. So in in one it was aqua chi treated water, and the other 
uh, was one called a cell spa. It's another uh, foot bath. So if a lot of people think the same thing happens with all, but it's not true. Look at the, the response of the uh, aqua chi treated seeds. Okay, and on the other side, of course, uh, well, you can compare the, the growth that happens there. Now, um, the, there were charged water trials done with uh, plants, actually, uh, many years ago. And what I'm going to do is I'd like to give you uh, the ability to, uh, let's see, download this report. I'm, what I'm going to do is we're going to try something I haven't done here before. One sec. I'm going to copy a link here. I'm going to I'm going to try to uh, put in a uh, a link. And uh, where do I put that? Okay. Now, what should happen is uh, you should have this uh, open up in a new uh, window in within your um, browser. If not, I think what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to put this in the chat box so that you can click on it there. Okay, if you can't click on it, just copy that link and put it into a new window and that will download that test. It's a 22 page document that shows uh, dramatic changes in growth of plants by simply being uh, treated or fed um, the charged water. So for, for all of you green thumbs out there, uh, think about what you, you do with your discarded water. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go back. One sec here. Trying to get out of it. Okay, got to go back here. Try it again. Oh, it's working today. Good. Okay, there we go. All right, so here's uh, here's some more. Uh, these were done in soil. And this is a, another competing unit. After 14 days, uh, I think the response is pretty, <laughs> the comparison is pretty uh, dramatic. Um, many of you have probably seen a video that we did that control, uh, uh, involved uh, tomatoes and how the longevity of t tomatoes that are treated in aqua chi water. Okay, now the critical thing to remember in all this is that it's the electrical properties that are being uh, imparted by the aqua chi that creates this effect. It actually rejuvenates or helps to um, enliven the cells in the body and this is what creates a lot of the uh, dramatic benefits that people feel and you know we're not actually permitted to talk specifically about medical conditions but believe me uh, over the years there are people who uh, you know have been lifted out of very dire uh, health circumstances with the aqua chi. Um, other tests that were done were, were with humans and uh, a one that clearly shows itself time and time again is the ability to lower blood pressure and by the way this is where the where they're trying to focus with the NIH on doing some more testing because it is uh, replicated so easily uh, with the aqua chi. Now, let me do this I'm gonna give you a link for this one too uh, there's a uh, another document and let's go back here Okay, I'm going to put that in the chat box here. Okay, and there's another one you can uh, you can either copy or click on. I'm not sure how it appears on your end. Now, uh, the other thing that's from the very beginning with the aqua chi it has been the dramatic change that uh, you see, or I should say, a phlebotomist sees when you look in the microscope at uh, blood cells before and after a treatment, okay? Um, you can see here live blood cells. Um, you, see, you notice how these are, are kind of, uh, these cells are stacked like coins? Well, this is a, this is a condition known as roulet, I think, or rouleau, rouleau. And uh, it's a French word, I'm not sure what <laughs> exactly it translates to, but um, this, is a, this is a pretty standard uh, condition with people uh, in general, with the population at large. The, cells clump together and when they clump together guess what they cannot assimilate and eliminate as they should 
and what the what the, what the uh, issue there is that it, over time it creates an inflammation because those toxins are not being removed and uh, it, that's the precursor to disease so what happens when you have an aqua chi treatment is the cells before and after and sometimes it takes a you know a few sessions before you see this effect but the cells will actually repel so they will t uh, they'll get, uh, repel away from each other which is actually a very good thing because the full surface area of those cells are then able to carry out their function okay the assimilation and elimination there's no uh, impediment nothing sticking or clumping together on that okay so mm, Michael it, yes Michael if I just may say something um, I was working with doctors and I was traveling and we did um, with patients um, they did the dark field testing with every patient and with every patient after one session there was absolute improvement and they did take the blood before and after and you could see it on the computer screen that it was after one foot bath which was only like between 30 and 40 minutes the cells were not as clumped together okay awesome so we, we saw it we saw it with every person that we worked with for a whole weekend and nobody could believe it all right, but it yeah. was, you know, literally visible on the screen. <clears throat> okay, uh, excellent. All right, that's exactly the kind of uh, thing that happens over and over again with this. So if you have the opportunity to, if you have somebody near you who, who does the dark field mi micros oh, I know it's gonna microscopy, <laughs> uh, then, uh, then you can uh, uh, take advantage of that because you can see some pretty dramatic changes. So the question is, is the, uh, is the Aqua Chi uh, a cure-all? Um, is it, uh, one moment, is it a silver bullet? Uh, no, I guess we couldn't say that because, uh, you know, different people respond differently to different treatments. But um, as, a, as a natural uh, treatment for the body where there is no uh, side effect, uh, that is a pretty, it's a pretty great thing uh, when you consider it. Uh, everything else seems to be invasive these days. And uh, to have something that doesn't, uh, have any uh, byproduct for the body in a negative way? I think that's that's a very good thing. So, um, so that's the uh, the first piece. Uh, I wanted to to flip back now, and we're going to talk with uh, Michaela a little more about her practice. So, uh, Michaela, we we have uh, both uh, individuals and practitioners on with us today. And what I wanted you to do is, since you've been practicing for more than 15 years with the Aqua Chi, speak a little about both your personal experience uh, with, the, with uh, your own uh, health and how it's impacted your health, and then also about the kinds of things that you've seen uh, help be helped with your clients. Um, I'd love to. Um, I was literally one of the first people that was promoting this particular device here in the States. <clears throat> and I was working a lot with doctors where they also used meridian end therapy, where everything that was in the body would show up on the computer. You know, anything from parasites, pesticides, any allergens, anything that was wrong, viral, bacterial stuff. And after one foot bath, the meridians were different, the stress. <clears throat> The organ stress was different and some of the things were already being eliminated and numbers had dropped. And it was just amazing for me to see how much had changed after then when we did the testing again after two or three foot baths with people, you know, keeping two days in between. Um, for me, the number one fascinating aspect to the foot bath is prevention. Um, what you can do to just prevent for the future, for the health of your body, by um, using the aqua chi to mostly, I mean the detox effect is really one of the few visible effects, but the invisible effects in the body is what's really important. And what we've also found out with these doctors that I was working with with the testing is that most toxins that we have in our body are really invisible. So the invisibility, even if you think you're better because your water looks better, and that's why, you know, don't focus on the color of the water because a lot of the toxins, we've worked with painters who have their own painting business 
and a lot of the fumes and whatever else they came in contact with, you know, constantly with the mucus overload and membranes that were exposed was really invisible toxins. And it's the invisible stuff that we also get from the pesticides when we're out in, you know, the fields after spraying and whatever things are sprayed. So don't be fooled by the color of the water. I mean, it's an indicator, but it's not it. And prevention in the sense is really important to me because when allergy season comes, you want to advertise to your clients before, you know, do five or ten sessions before the season hits so that the allergens that are in between your cells can be released and then you will react differently with the allergies. Some people have had barely any allergic reactions because they did that. It's the same thing, same principle basically as you would do an oil change, an oil filter change in your car. So why would you spend money there and use, you know, the money to get your car running, keep your car running efficiently and not do the same thing with your body by doing the foot baths. And so the same thing, of course, uh, goes for cold season. If, you know, the viral flu, whatever stuff is starting to hit, do foot baths before and really be consistent with doing at least two a week. Yeah, um, especially also when you've had a long chronic time of disease, like I had a client and she had done a lot of her foot baths and always had the color change and then I hadn't seen her for a while and the color didn't change. She started getting color in her face back. She was very pale. I didn't know what had happened in between and she was complaining, well, why is my water not changing? And I'm like, I don't know what was going on with you in the meantime. <clears throat> and she told me she had had three weeks of pneumonia. And so her body was just really charging up and close to like 25 minutes on the foot bath, she finally started, uh, her body was strong enough to start dumping more again. And, you know, the color turned and everything was like she was used to by the foot bath. But when you've had a long cold or flu or, you know, any kind of chronic disease where you've had also treatment or surgery, for instance, when you've been exposed to a lot of, you know, medication and the body's dealing with the chemicals, your body's doing its best, like the onion principle, to really get the stuff out. And sometimes in the beginning, you just need to recharge more before anything else happens. But it doesn't mean that nothing is happening in, in your brain. It doesn't mean nothing is happening with your organs in the meantime, just because your water may not be changing. Yeah, so, uh, Michaela, one thing I, there. one thing I, uh, you reminded me of is that uh, numerous practitioners and individuals uh, over the years, I'm thinking in, in terms of children, um, I've heard over and over that uh, when, when uh, a child has a cold coming on or when everybody else in their class is getting sick, um, doing a, uh, just keeping up with the aqua chi during those times, the amount of absenteeism among children going to school with, has been, I mean, this is just uh, astounding. I, I've heard that over and over again, and I'm, you know, this applies to adults too, you know, so that you, uh, you know, when you feel uh, a, a cold, a flu, or other thing coming on, step up your use of the aqua chi, and uh, you're likely to have uh, either reduced uh, symptoms or time involved with, it, with any kind of illness. So, uh, you have any input on that, Michaela? My our own daughter, you know, when she has a cold coming on, you know, we just stick her in the foot baths and we did that since she was almost four years old and it would really take down the time and it would help clear the head and it helps with the pressure also, you know, in the whole head cavity with the symptoms. And the other thing that's really important is that you keep up the water intake also during the foot bath. You know, make sure that you have enough water next to you so you can drink it during the foot bath and, remi and remember the detox and the flush out continues for two days after. Some people, you know, forget about that for a while. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in the next uh, segment here. Uh, I wanted to ask, though, if you, if you had any other, um, uh, you know, st stories about uh, experiences with any of your clients or, or yourself, uh, you know, just share one more. Yeah, definitely metal detox. It's really good. It's really good um, if you know that you have metal in your body. Work with some homeopathic drainage remedies to support it, and it totally speeds up the process to get the metals out of your system. It, it doesn't matter what metal it is. 
Um, it just helps dislodge things and get things into the lymph, into the bloodstream, and to just really get it out also through the stool, the urine, wherever the thing, wherever the metals are held. Um, I've seen it work uh, with scar tissue where um, the Aquachi was starting to break up scar tissue and the barriers and the pain would get lessened. Somebody had a really bad appendix scar, big one, it was pretty butchered and it was so much better after a while. Um, just like two foot baths, there was a different sensation, less inflammation around the scar itself so it's really great to use it after surgeries when you've had you know scars and, and stitches um, to avoid inflammation from spreading and um, the other wonderful thing was that if you take it in the bathtub if you have of, of, you know use it in the bathtub that in if you have for instance um, growths that are like for ladies or in, in your colon with polyps or ladies in the vaginal area these polyps change nature they the cells restructure and they're actually by doctors diagnosed as different kinds of growth and polyps after a while. And so that is fascinating too because you see the change in the cell itself, cell structure. And so charging up your cells is what really helps the body do its job better again. It's not that, you know, the, the aqua chi heals in that sense, but because the cells in the cell core themselves are in a, at a higher charge and functioning better, they are then able to perform the job that they are supposed to perform. And so that's a wonderful um, benefit. And so the detoxing with cells is, is uh, with metals is really, really important to use drainage remedies or anything that you can do. If you do cleanses with liver or colon, also use the aqua chi. If you're trying to do any diets and weight loss, use the aqua chi because it helps everything to get dumped. Like a lot of people are on the HCG buzz. Um, I've done it myself and it's really wonderful, but get the fat and everything that starts loosening and clearing out, get it out right away with the aqua chi. You'll be amazed what you see floating on top, even weeks after you're done with um, the diet itself. It's just amazing. The acidity levels definitely go down. People have had less stress also with urinary infection, kidney infections, um, paralysis anywhere in the legs, partial paralysis. So there is so many different ways that you can work with it and have benefits. Sometimes you need to be a little bit more patient depending on how long you've had the condition that you're trying to work with. Okay. Now, I, I should probably interject that uh, uh, as some of, some of the things uh, may be a medical in nature, you know, if you've got an issue that you're dealing with, <clears throat> uh, all of these things you would have to consult with your physician about, okay? So uh, everybody's got a different uh, body and different circumstances, so uh, we're not going to try to put a, paint a blanket picture uh, for everyone, although certain th certain tendencies and uh, things repeat uh, among different uh, groups with the aqua chi. So that's as much as I'll say, but keep uh, keep up with your physician on these things as well. Okay. Now we're going to, uh, uh, it's actually a good segue because I have uh, some more <coughs> slides I'd like to share with you. And uh, these have to do with, uh, a, a, again, about what other things that you can do uh, while you're using the aqua chi, what are the other things that you can do to help clear yourself of toxicity? Um, so the role of detox is is primary. You know, I think that that's probably the key. The key to, to good health is is keeping your body clean and uh, giving it good nutrients. Um, so prevention is, is a is a the first one, and of course rebuilding uh, from past uh, toxicity is the other. We we have been uh, uh, this this the group that we're speaking with today mostly you know uh, baby boomers in, in in that area we grew up in a time when uh, we went from uh, a world where everything was basically uh, uh, organic in the beginning uh, into a whirlwind of chemical uh, creation in the world and I'll talk a little about that because I call it the guinea pig generation because uh, most of this was unregulated so. We, we're dealing with stresses to the body that no other generation has, <laughs> and this creates some health challenges, obviously. So why is uh, the 
the uh, two, two things to discuss here are, are why is detox critical and what are the tools for cleansing. Now, we've already spoken about the aqua chi a bit, but um, what are the, th the threats that we're dealing with? Okay, well, as I said, there's chemical pollution, uh, food and cosmetic additives, hormone pollution, air pollution, and radiation. So what is your risk? Uh, and we're going to look at some of the statistics here in the U.S. Um, we're talk let's talk a little about the, the likelihood that you could get cancer. Well, the odds when you're 55, you have about a 5 or 6 percent uh, probability that you could get cancer. But uh, as if you look at that top row there, as you go uh, higher in age, well, your, your uh, likelihood is going to increase dramatically. So by the time you're uh, 75, you have almost a 23 percent chance of, of getting cancer. Now, in the, uh, in the 25 years between 1950 and 1974, the mortality rate from cancer was about uh, 372 people in 100,000. Now, you'd think that in the last uh, 25 or 30 years that we would have had breakthroughs with, um, you know, cancer or prevention. Uh, I mean, we've, there's been so much we've discovered about our health. But unfortunately, the, uh, the mortality rate is not going in the right direction. So it continues to increase even though we've had um, great, great breakthroughs in, uh, in health. So I think that that should be a little bit of an alarm to people you know, who are trying to depend entirely upon the system to, uh, you know, for their health uh, direction. I think that self-administered health is going to be a huge thing uh, because it, it's just you have to do it. There's just no, no two ways around it. So the, uh, the studies uh, that are being done, again, everything points to increased cancer risk. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, you would think, as I said, that the higher your age is, the greater your, um, greater your risk. But now we're seeing that younger people are, are having a higher proportion of, of risk than older people. So things are kind of being turned on their head uh, as far as who's at risk. So uh, here's a North Carolina study that, uh, that uh, tongue, oral tongue cancer increasing in young white females. Mm -hmm. Who, who, why is it? Why is it only in young white females? You know, so these are the kind of things that just are not being uh, addressed, and we're not getting good answers for. So, the the bottom line of all this is that you know you've got to be uh, you've got to be looking after your health. So that I, I believe that the chemical pollution is the biggest uh, area that is affecting all of these statistics. Okay. Um, if you look in, in the at chemical use in, in the uh, USA in 1940, there was ver uh, virtually no use of chemicals. Now we have over 80,000 chemicals that are, are used. Now, uh, if you if you if you feel like you're being taken care of and given the right advice by your government, I'm going to suggest that you might want to think twice because look at that look at that red line at the bottom of this slide. That shows how many uh, of these chemicals were actually uh, forced or that were required to be tested. Well, take take a guess. How many do you think were required to be tested before being used commercially? Well, 200 out of 80,000. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> I'm getting a little uh, concerned. That's what that's, that's when I see that statistic. So, how many were banned uh, that you know came to market? Only five. All right. So, there's in my in my way of thinking. The, those uh, that discrepancy is just too wide, and it, it it's a red flag to me. The other thing that is uh, should be a red flag is that of those eighty thousand chemicals, Europe, the the European Union banned thirty thousand thousand of them in two thousand ten. Now, why was that? Because they found that uh, some of these uh, pesticides, these uh, chemicals, were actually uh, altering the genetic makeup of animals. And so why would you want to take any kind of risk? Uh, or, or do you really want to wait until you see something happen in a human? So uh, I think that uh, the European Union was very forward thinking in doing what they've done. But unfortunately, there, there was no follow through on the part of the US government uh, regarding those chemicals. So the bottom line is your health is in your hands. So remember that. and. Uh, 
you know, natural treatments, I believe, like uh, including the Aqua Chi, and what you do uh, at home is going to be probably going to make the biggest difference, okay? So the first key, detoxification is the first key in a holistic plan. And uh, there's three more keys, uh, food and water, and that's one that Michaela mentioned, the water is critical, all right, food and water, exercise and sleep, and mental attitude. And they, all three of those go together. The neuroscience studies about uh, your brain and how it impacts the whole body is, this is just in its infancy now, but I think that's pretty critical. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a, uh, a link again with you that, is a, um, that shows all of these uh, books that I'm going to talk about. So you can, uh, you know, if you want to get one, it'll be a reference for you. So you could just uh, uh, download it using that link. Um, so let me get back here. So uh, the three books here for food and water are uh, Superfoods by uh, Dr. Stephen Pratt, MD. Uh, excellent book. It basically allows you to focus on the foods that are going to have the greatest impact. And these are all, by the way, these are not exotic foods. These are foods that uh, you can get every day at the supermarket. And uh, the book gives a great explanation about what they can help. And uh, you know, for instance, one that I one that I've used pretty religiously since reading that book is walnuts. Uh, so I sprinkle them over my food, and there's there's some great. Uh, research about walnuts. Now you know when, when you look at a walnut, it looks a little like the human brain. Well, uh, it's, it's, uh, there's an interesting parallel there because it, it has a lot of uh, brain uh, increasing function, uh, the, the nutrients in it. So just that's interesting. Now the other two books here are uh, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. Um, this is one that goes into uh, from a doctor who actually use, uses water in his practice as a way of healing people and uh, you know, basically, we are all chronically dehydrated, according to this book. And you can make some great changes just by doing that. Now, with the Aqua Chi, that is uh, that's a, a critical uh, a thing there because the the water is what helps to carry out toxicity in the body. So you have you don't have enough water, it gets all that toxicity remains in your body. So uh, drink plenty of water before and after your Aqua Chi sessions. Not just today, but you know, every day is great. And then. Uh, the third book here is uh, How to Eliminate Harmful Toxins from Your Drinking Water, the Drinking Water book. Uh, that's another great book. You can get that on Amazon or other booksellers. Exercise and sleep. Well, the exercise, I think that it's pretty self-explanatory. There's dozens, uh, hundreds of books you could get on that. Um, but if you just walk 15 minutes a day, you'll, be, you'll probably be in the top percent, 10% uh, of people in the U.S. as far as your uh, your uh, health level, all right? So just, just it doesn't have to be strenuous, just do, do something, okay? Um, and there's a great book here on, uh, on in improving your sleep patterns, Say Goodnight to Insomnia by Greg Jacobs. Uh, that's, a, that's a great one as well. And finally, uh, Mental Attitude. Uh, two books that I like, but there's, there's dozens of them. One is a Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. He was a, a plastic surgeon that, um, found he had uh, patients that would, uh, he would, they would come to him and they would have dramatically uh, uh, greater results in their looks. However, for some reason, they, psychologically, they saw themselves as being the same, you know, as, as being ugly or whatever they were trying to correct. And he was, uh, he was totally, uh, totally uh, baffled by that and that, that started a lifelong pursuit to find out about the uh, the whole mental side of, of things. It's not all about the outs outer looks, you know, so that's a fascinating look there. And then uh, the other book is The Law of Attraction by Esther and Jerry Hicks. And that is, uh, again, it's all about how you can create um, a, a better uh, personal world view for yourself and a more positive one. So uh, the last one, a book that I'd like to share is a uh, one by Jillian Michaels. Now, this looks like a weight loss book, and frankly, when I when I saw it, I, I that's exactly what I thought it was. It's because it says a hot and healthy body. Well, <laughs> I don't know if that's you know the the book that calls out to me all the time, but I, I will tell you that if you go in and read this book, it's got uh, it, it it gives you I mean more than you you would ever want to know about the uh, uh, levels of toxicity, pesticides, and things that impact your hormones in your body. 
Um, I, I found it, it's a really uh, educational read, so you might want to consider looking at that as far, as far as another detoxification resource. So the bottom line here is detox regularly, detox regularly, and that's using all the means, uh, the water and the, the water and aqua chi, I think are, are two the biggest ones there, but all of those ideas uh, will fit in with that. Now at, at this point, I would like to share one other item while I'm talking about that, and this is that uh, guide uh, that we have, and I'm going to put that in the chat box in a sec. Okay, this is the body detox guide, um, and you'll be able to just uh, put that into your uh, address bar and then hit enter, and it should open it up uh, on a separate tab or whatever have you. Um, so this goes through a lot of the different modalities of detoxification, including uh, the foot bath, and uh, I think you'll find it a great resource uh, with that. So um, let me ask uh, uh, Michaela if you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, if you, you're, I think you're muted. I'm gonna... Okay, sorry. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so... um, I wanted to um, just when you were saying about mental attitude and everything, um, friends of mine who are dowsers, they would douse um, clients after the foot bath to see where they also or how much they got a mental benefit um, from taking the foot bath, and a lot of them because of pesticides and having been exposed to. Um, really bad ones in California, especially before they got banned, um, had much more mental clarity and uh, brain fog was lifted. And also with chlorine, um, interestingly enough, um, somebody tried to really have a foot bath with wonderful um, special water that had absolutely no chlorine in it and um, thought that it would make a big difference. And it was very interesting because her water started stinking like chlorine after a very short time. And she didn't know where it was coming from. She was very irritated, very annoyed. And um, so I just started asking her some questions because I'm thinking, you know, where does it come from? And intuitively I knew that there was, she had been exposed to a lot of chlorine in her life. And so she told me that she was on the swim team and she spent hours in the pool for years and years and years. And so it was very interesting that um, her body was detoxing a lot of the chlorine and especially from her brain and she could feel a lot more mental clarity afterwards and it was really phenomenal for her to find that you know her body was so distressed from all that and she could really feel there was a more clarity more thinking going on for her. Um, after only one foot bath and so it was actually good that she came and had her own water that absolutely had no chlorine whatsoever and it was beneficial and so it was really wonderful to hear and see her um, um, benefit and she's using it also with colonics she has a colonics practice and she uses it with people there before the, the colonic to start things going again and also if you are a practitioner that uses any kind of hands-on therapy, massage, reflexology, whatever, do it before, even lymph therapy, do it before um, you get um, into, you know, do the therapy before and then get the people into the foot bath so that they have maximum benefit from it. It's really amazing what you can get through all that. So I encourage you strongly, you know, keep playing with it and let people also feel where they're feeling in their body the most release while they're going through it. You know, is it in their legs? Is it, is it, is it less brain fog? Do they have more memory? Do they have more focus? So really stay with all that too. And, you know, energy shifts as you're releasing the toxins. You know, and that's why people feel lighter oftentimes after a foot bath. Are you ready, Michael? Michael, are you ready?
and personal people, clients that are using it, as well as holistic practitioners. So we're getting a whole range of feedback and testimonials from uh, this variety of clientele. Um, and so it's not just, you know, it's not biased in any way. Okay. Michael, can you hear me? Are yeah, you ready? I, I had to. Uh, I had a problem there. I dropped out there for a minute. So uh, now I'm back. Do you? Are you able to see me or no? Um, not your head. Okay, but you can see my uh, t torso. Correct. I'll see everything below the. Okay. Good. Yeah. So um, what I'm going to do uh, is we're going to move into the the next section, and this is going to be uh, a uh, a how to do virtually anything you ever wanted to do <laughs> as far as taking care of your aqua chi. So uh, what I've done is I've set up uh, a little uh, a little setup here where we can go through uh, numerous uh, tips on how to do things with the aqua chi. Um, so I mean I guess at this point I'll I'll ask uh, Mikhail, I know that you uh, you had a previous commitment is is there anything else that you'd like to say before we go into this segment? I think you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, if you recommend the Aqua Chi to any friend, any client, you're giving them a major gift of health. So just think about it from that perspective. Awesome. Okay. Hey, uh, thank you, Michaela. And uh, now we're going to step into the uh, uh, a series of uh, tips and basically anything having to do with taking care of your Aqua Chi. I'm going to try to address all the questions. Uh, we've had over the years so that you can be an expert when it comes to taking care of and making sure that your aqua chi is always wor working at its best okay so let's uh, let's begin uh, with the module this is the the heart of the aqua chi uh, it's really a, a beautifully designed thing a series of uh, rings concentric and uh, the first tip we're going to work on here is to simply change your ring set. Now, obviously, some people have done this for years, but there are things that uh, you'll you'll pick up here just by uh, by following along here. So, the ring set consists of this clip here and the two rings that it holds in place. So, I'm just going to remove this ring set. The clip comes out, and then uh, I like to use a uh, a little pair of pliers because a lot of times those uh, ring sets when they're when they're used they get a little jagged this is a new one but um, I grab them with a with a needle nose pliers and then uh, they, they slide out a lot, a lot easier at that point Get that one which way am I pulling it there we go that was a little more stubborn that one anyway so the, you have the the ring set is these two rings and a clip okay and some people call these strips, but I call them clips because they're clipping the two rings in. Now, let's go ahead and replace the ring set. Push the ring in with your thumb. Top. And then bottom. And they'll go into, uh, they'll fit in there. You'll hear, hear it kind of click in there. And at that point, on the top, you'll see there's a little hole here. That's where you want to put your clip through. First, put that through the top, and then you're going to have that clip squeeze onto the two rings that you just inserted. Okay. Now let me do this. I'm going to give you one other tip here because sometimes people say, you know, my clip isn't staying on there nice and firm. Okay. So let's take it out. And the first thing I would do is to give it a little squeeze this way, a little squeeze, just so it has a little more strength when you put it on. Now the other thing you can do, and this is kind of the insider tip, is is you can actually go to the tip, the bottom tip of this, put it in a pliers, and then just give it a little turn as if it's curling in. Okay, and what that does is when you put it on, it grabs onto that ring a little better. So that's just something to make sure that you're you've got a good firm connection, those two things, and then you can push in and up, and, and then you have your your. And uh, Michael, also when the when the clip. When the clip has been used a lot, you want to always be sure that the bottom clip where Michael just bent it is always snug and tight. That's when you know that your module is working at its highest. If that bottom 
clip is not hugging that uh, ring tight, then you're really not getting the benefit. Right, yeah, so the important thing is here that over, over a series of baths, this clip is going to get weaker because it is uh, deteriorating. So in between, it's good to squeeze together this part of it and then put it back on. That will give you a tighter connection to your rings, okay? It'll give you more life out of your ring set, so that is a, that's a good tip. Um, okay, so let's talk about uh, the cleaning uh, no, let's not do cleaning. Let's let's do what, what what we would do with the module first. Okay, so uh, so we've done a ring set. Let's say we have something a little more. Uh, what we want to do now is to change the copper ring. Let's assume that you've had your your module for three years. You've been changing your ring sets. You've been taking care of things, but now you find that this copper ring uh, is deteriorating. Now this is a brand new module, but let's you know use your imagination. If, if that was the case, this copper ring would be getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And that's when you know you've got to change it. So the, what we're going to do is change the copper ring. First, start by taking out the ring set. Okay. And then you have your ring set removed. You can see you have just the, the spot there where, where it was. At this point, you have to remove one of the uh, white legs in order to get at that copper ring in the middle. You can't just slide it out because it's locked in by, by these white legs. Okay, So let's look first at the difference between these legs. Each leg is different. See this one here? This is, has a copper strip in it. Don't touch that one. This really uh, does not have to be removed but in one circumstance, which we'll go over later. Um, and then the other two legs is you have a short, you have a short leg uh, and, and one with longer slits. Here's the one with longer slits. See that one there? And then one there. This is where the, the ring set slides out of. That's what allows the ring set to slide. And then the other one is the shorter, uh, shorter one, which is right over here. Okay, you see how there's, there's no longer slits on that one? All right, so that's the one we're going to remove. How do you go about that? Well, the first thing to do is to put a uh, flathead screwdriver in the, into the indentation on the top of the module. Okay, and then you, you're going to give it a slight turn. Now I say slight because be careful. You, you're removing this white leg. You don't want to stress the plastic so much that you're going to break it. In fact, the best way to, to, before you start, the best thing to do is to soak this, put this module in very hot water for 10 minutes before you start. Just get the hottest tap water you can and soak this module in the hot tap water for 10 minutes. That's going to give you a little more pliability in that plastic so that you're less risk of you know, making a mistake and, and then uh, breaking it. So see what I've done here? Look closely and you can see that that has been lifted up enough so that you can see a white tab on the top of the module. Okay. Once you've got that side uh, up, flip it around to the bottom of the same leg and we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Lift slightly, and then once that's lifted, you'll see that both sides have been lifted out, and I'm going to just move from the center, pull out, and then see how it comes out, it comes out there? Slides out. At this point, it's really easy just to take out the copper ring and replace it. So this, we're going to put this back. And then putting the, the leg on is just the reverse. You're going to kind of line it up with both sides. Make sure you put the, um, put the dolphin facing up the same way as the others, because you could put it upside down if you're not looking. And then line up the rings. First the copper ring. Let's make sure we get this lined up here. OK, good. Now you can see that I've already begun to get it back in. The copper ring's already kind of in its slot. And these other rings look like they're lining up pretty nicely. So at this point, I'm just going to grab with, my, with my, uh, the heel of my hand, and I'm going to push and hold with the other fingers. OK, that clicks in. I'll flip it around. And I'll do the same thing here. Click, and then this back in. Uh, then you just put your, uh, your ring set back in, and uh, you are good, good to go again. All right. So we're taking each thing that we're doing here is a different procedure, um, and I'm doing them independently because we're actually going to uh, 
present these as separate little tip how-to videos so people can learn this at any time. So let's go on and uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to change the post set. Now the post set is this top piece and the bottom piece. They have posts sticking up and down. They come as a, as a, as a set, two pieces, and this is probably the most, uh, involves the most work. Uh, you have to be thinking about it because they, they're not the easiest things to get out. But what we'll do is we'll start again what we, we're going to find the leg that has the shortest slits, and that's this one. But be careful because one, the other leg, this copper one here with the copper strip, also has short slits. Do not touch the, the, uh, uh, the leg with the copper strip if at all possible. All right? So let's go. Uh, we're gonna also not going to take out the one with the longer slits, but we're going to concentrate on the one with the shorter slits. Okay? Let's take that out first. And again, uh, make sure you soak your module for 10 minutes in hot water so that uh, the plastic, the white plastic, is more pliable. Okay? And we're going to flip this over. And again, I'm, I'm wedging this... Uh, I'm wedging this flathead screwdriver in and just giving a slight turn, pushing a little bit till it comes over the lip of the hole in that colored plastic. Once you've got it o uh, both sides above the lip, then you can pull out and that leg comes off. So now, in order to get at the posts, we do need to remove the center rings. So take out your copper ring and the large uh, silver rings on either side of the copper ring. And now you have uh, the module with just the post set. Now what's good about this setup is that you still have two legs holding the, uh, the module together. It can be a real puzzle piece if you take the entire thing apart. It's not that you can't put it back together again, but this is going to be easier if we try to keep a couple of legs in the module while we're doing this procedure. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm removing a post set is I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the top part of these white legs and just get them over the lip so I can get at that post a little easier. So again, I'm just lifting this white plastic over the lip and that gives me access now to easily remove this post. Get at that. There it comes. Okay, It comes out of, this, out of the little slits holding them in. You can take it out and there it is. Okay. Now, while it's in this position, that's where you're going to put the new post back in because you've got it the way you want it. So let's do that. Put the new post in and line it up with the little uh, s slots on either side in the legs. And once you've got them lined up, you can push in the white leg. And the same thing for this. Use the heel of your, th your hand and push while holding the other side of the module. And you'll, you'll hear it click in. Okay, and you can see here it's actually contacting this copper strip in the leg very nicely uh, when you push it back in. But I do I do one one extra thing. I give it a little tap, put to get that back in to make sure that it's well seated in this area. So now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Now, if you if you want to re replace this, it doesn't always need to be replaced. But if you got it, if you got the module uh, open already, then maybe. It's a good idea to try that. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to lift up and lift up on the other other leg as well using that screwdriver. And I just and my bottom one just fell out. One moment. All right. So I have the the bottom piece out. Where's my focus? There we go. All right, here's the, uh, here's the bottom piece. Uh, let's assume that we've taken the old one out. We're going to put the new one in, slide that into the slot, and you've got to kind of hold it up a little bit, and then do the same thing. Squeeze across the module with your heel of your thumb. We already have one in, and now we're going to do the other. You just kind of line it up with the uh, slot. I'm going to push with one hand. Okay. Okay, I clicked it in. All right, now we've got it well seated, both of them. I am going to give that a tap. Use a screwdriver. 
And so I'm going to just double check it. You can see now that the uh, top and bottom are seated in this uh, white leg with the copper strip. This is important because this is what carries the connection through the module. Okay, so we'll go ahead and I'm going to tap it. And that's just tapping that uh, silver disc against the white leg so it's sitting nicely. Uh, now putting the module back together is nice and easy. So we, we've done two things by doing it this way. Is one, there's no confusion about which leg goes back where because you only have taken one out entirely. To put it back together, you're going to put the large silver rings in first, one on either side of that center copper ring. Okay, the copper ring is going to go in between these two. Put that back. And um, at this point, you got all the rings but your regular ring set in there, so we can put our leg back on now. Line up the, uh, the slot, the copper ring first. Make sure you've got nothing that's sticking. Oh, that was a good one. I pushed it in, and both sides went in simultaneously. But uh, if you need to, you can do top and bottom squeezing and top and bottom squeezing that way. Okay. Once you've got it back in, uh, what I like to do is just check, uh, go back to this, and make sure that um, this silver ring on either side of the copper ring is fully seated in, up against this copper strip here in the leg. The easiest way to do that is to place, if you see that it's not fully seated, put this part of the module on a table, okay, and then take a flathead screwdriver and come in pushing down, I don't know if you can see that well, yeah, pushing down on the silver ring, it's going to take some pressure, pushing down to make sure that it's fully into the leg there. Same thing on this side, okay, you do both of those and then you're good to go. Uh, I make one more check, again this is the, the key, making sure that all the rings are are touching on that white leg with the copper strip and if it needs another tap here or there to make sure they're in do that uh, otherwise you you're ready to put your ring set back in and go ahead and do that top ring slide it in bottom ring slide it in okay so we now just put our clip back in place and everything is back as it should be. Okay? Okay, next. Let's talk about the cables that you might have with your Aqua Chi. And this is a this is a source of confusion. The reason being is that uh, uh, we have two different cable types. So I'm going to show you those now. The newer style cable is one that has a plug like this. Okay, it's kind of a long plug. If you've ever played guitar, <laughs> electric guitar, this is the exact same kind of plug you'd use. Um, so this is the newer style plug that goes with the machine, and um, that matches, by the way, with take this matches with uh, this over here. This is the DC outlet. Kind of has a hexagonal nut and a larger hole in it. Uh, you can, that's, that's how you know you use the newer style cable. And the older style looks something like this. Okay? It has an RCA type plug. So you see the difference there? Pretty, uh, it's not the same, so be careful. <clears throat> if you happen to be on our website, we have pictures of those two items. You have to take a close look to know which one you need. Okay? So it's either this one or this one. And on the front of the older models, you will have a uh, kind of a silver nipple that this plugs into. Okay, This is the older style cable. Let's see, it looks like a lamp cord. Okay, All of the newer cables, including the one with this connector, has a round circular cable. Okay, It's more robust. So all you have to be concerned is which connector do I have for my Aquachi. Okay. One last item is that on certain models, 
you might have gotten something with a cable like this and, and a little adapter that would make it fit into that newer style. Well, if you have to replace that cable, don't, don't get this and use your adapter. You don't need to do that anymore. Just replace it with this. Okay? So those are the two uh, styles. By the way, the uh, part number for this one is AQ-016-B. Okay? And then this one is AQ-016. Okay? And that's uh, a little about the cable. <clears throat> All right, so let's see now. Let's talk a little about the uh, proper setup for the machine. And I don't have it plugged in here, but I am going to show you the setup. One moment. Got our unit. Okay, so starting from uh, where you plug in, of course, you're going to need to plug it into the wall now. This is our, uh, an older style wall plug that we use. Um, many of you have the yellow one. However, we do have a newer style that's smaller than this. It's black in color, but same exact performance. They each have a reset button. So if you plug in the wall and you don't see a light, automatically press the, uh, the reset button, and that will turn on the light. You need to have that light on in order to have electrical current running to the machine. All right, now the next piece is remember to plug your, your module plug into the back. And you've got to push this in all the way. This has got to be pushed in the back all the way. A lot of times uh, we get calls and say, people saying it's not working, the light's not going on. Well, it's just something very simple. That could have become loose, all right? So just push that in in the back. I'm going to plug this in, actually, so we can see a light on here. Just one moment. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the front of this unit. We're going to talk about what settings we need to have on this unit, okay? The first thing you need to do is to turn on the timer. Actually, let's do this. All right, so turn on the timer. Usually uh, between 30 and 40 minutes is adequate. Uh, you'll notice that no light yet, no, no power. That's because we need to have the power level control in the on position. And if you turn it, just click it a hair. You can see now we have our green light. And the power level control is pointing toward max. It's hard to see here, but there is a, over here, there's the word max. So if you just click it barely, you're in the max position. And this is where you should start every bath, okay? Don't turn this dial uh, un unless you put in too much salt. This is something we want you to avoid. <clears throat> so uh, you've got your timer on, and you've got your power, le power level control clicked into the on position, just pointing at max. That's the best way to st start. At this point, um, you've got your, uh, your, your module connected and, and your module in the water. In fact, that you want to make sure what the module is in the water to begin with. Now, I don't have a bath set up, and that's the reason we're not seeing any activity on the meter. But as you, uh, the, the ideal reading, let me get a screwdriver here. The ideal reading is going to be between two and three. Look at that doesn't like my screwdriver. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, the way to get that reading between two and three is to now sprinkle in a little bit of salt at a time, allow it to dissolve, and when it reaches about two and a half, that's when you want to stop adding your salt. If you do put in too much salt, you may have to turn down the power level control a little bit, um, but don't worry about that. That's okay. Uh, th just don't do it every time because you'll wear out your uh, ring sets faster. Okay. Too much salt means uh, wearing out those ring sets sooner. All right. Now, um, let's see. The other thing that you want to keep in mind is that if you happen to put too much salt in and you have to be turning this, uh, I'm sorry, you have to turn this a lot. If I have to turn this down a lot, guess what? It's going to hurt my my bath. I'm going to have erratic performance. 
So having this closer to max is going to give me my best performance. Okay. Um, if you if you put too much salt in, you could blow a fuse. And this is why I say be gradual about how you add the salt. Most times you're going to have you're going to have the meter reading closer to one or zero when you start a bath, and as you add more salt, that begins to rise. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the balance that you have to make when you're starting a bath. Um, now I'm going to turn this off over here. Hard to do this when you're looking away at the camera. Um, <clears throat> now notice that uh, my adjustment on the the meter we have. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah, see that how on, uh, the needle is not lining up with zero? Well, here's something you can do to adjust that. It's just, uh, you can use your fingernail even. There's a little slot, slotted screw underneath there. Uh, and I'm going to make an adjustment by just turning that. Let me see if I can do this while you're looking. I don't know if I've... I'm just turning it with my finger. Okay, now look. Does that look a little like it's lined up a little better. That's what you want to do is to just give that screw a little tweak and it'll give you accurate readings when you do your bath. So this is adjusting the meter. Okay, now on to the next thing. Let's say that you have made a boo-boo and you put in too much salt in the water. Sometimes what happens is you'll blow a fuse because too much conductivity in the water means that this guy is going to shoot way over to the, to the right-hand side above five. And that is a sure way to blow a fuse. Sometimes when you do that, it will actually be so strong that the needle will stick over on five. And uh, it just sticks there. And, you, and people think, oh my god, I've broken the machine forever. Uh, but no, you haven't. Um, there's a way to uh, fix that. I'm going to give you a technique to do that. Uh, this is a little more of an advanced technique, but anybody can do it. So <clears throat> let's say that it's stuck over on uh, the five. Well, this this window here is a spring-loaded window, and what 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 I mean by that is not held in, screwed in in any way. You can actually remove it by tugging outwards at this. But I'm not going to do it now. But it is in a spring. If you pull outward from the front of the from front of the panel with this you can uh, cause that uh, stuck needle to fall back to zero as it should be. Uh, I'm not going to create that situation because I really don't want to do that, but uh, there is a, a, a way to uh, fix that if you, you run into that problem. Okay? All right. <clears throat> going to unplug this. Okay, so what if you do blow a fuse? You have to know how to replace the fuses. Um, you can see on the back of this plate uh, there are two fuses. Both of these fuses are identical. So uh, all you need to do, is, if you don't have any fuses in your kit, uh, just take take one of the blown fuses to a Home Depot, Radio Shack, Lowe's, you know, something like that, and show them the fuse that you took from the back of the Aqua Chi. <clears throat> now, in order to uh, take take it out. You need to press on the lower part of the plate. It says press here, I think. Let's see, does it say that? It just says press. So let's press on it. All right, just press a little, and you can see that it has already, um, where is it? Here it is. I'm just going to grab. It comes out just a little bit. And this, all it is is a little plate that holds a fuse. See that? It's a little plate that holds a fuse. And when you get it out, the fuse just pulls right out. It's not. It's it's held in there very lightly. And here's that um, that plate. See the little place you put your fuse. Okay. Put the. Let's replace the fuse. And uh, when you put the the new fuse in, um, just put the fuse back in. Kind of jiggle it so it, it sits in there. And then what you want to do is push in and then up. Okay, and then, then it goes back in. Pushing down is what releases it. Pushing it in and up is what puts it back in. Let's do it with the other one. <clears throat> Hear that click? That means that it came out nicely. and It's just nice and loose. You can just gently pull it out 
And there it is. Let's put this one back in. And push in and up. And it's back in. Okay? So those are the two fuses. Um, I always re recommend to replace both of the fuses uh, because sometimes you think it's only one fuse blown when both of them are. <clears throat> so one looks visibly blown, but sometimes behind those silver caps on the fuse, there can be a break in the wire. And so the easiest way to avoid headache and strain is just to put both two, two new fuses in when you, when you do blow a fuse. <clears throat> the only other type of uh, fuse that we have in uh, the box here is this circuit breaker. Let's see here, circuit breaker here. Now this, in a normal, uh, when it's working, should be feel loose and kind of have a little, little spring to it, okay? I'm going to try to turn this sideways. <clears throat> okay, so you can see here, it's sticking out just about, I don't know, eighth inch, quarter inch, and it just has this kind of feel to it. You see that? So this is normal. This is the way it should be. If you did trip the circuit breaker, this would be sticking out, oh, about you know, half an inch or so, okay? And so it'll have, it won't have this, this light to the touch feel. It'll be sticking out, and you'll have to actually spring it, push it back in for it to click back in. All right? So this hardly ever blows, by the way, but sometimes it does. Um, so I want you to be aware of that. Okay? All right. All right, so now um, I'm going to go back to the module one more time. And we're going to talk about when it comes time for you to replace uh, everything in the module. This is what we call a module rebuild. Now, we offer a service <clears throat> where you can send in your module, and we'll do it for you. We'll put all new metal components in there. But for the do-it-yourselfers, uh, you can do that uh, yourself. Now, there's a series of videos that we have done on replacing every component except for one, actually, and that's this uh, leg with the copper strip. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, what you would need to do in order to replace that. Okay, sometimes this copper strip can uh, wear out. It's very rare, but it can, and so I want you to know how you can do that. First thing you'll have to do is to remove the leg with the copper strip. <clears throat> Lift up slightly with a flathead screwdriver and the middle indentation. Turn it over. Do the same thing with this side on the bottom side. Okay, you've got it loosened. Pull outward and hold the, hold the rings in place. Oh, I didn't take out my ring set. One sec. Let's remove that first. Ring set. Since these slide out easily, I better take those out first. Sec. That's a stubborn one, so I use my needle nose pliers for that one. Okay, so once you've got that, you can slide out this leg, holding the copper ring in place, and out, out it comes. <clears throat> put that down. Here's what the legs looks like. Now, before you can uh, put in the new leg, you probably have a strip a new strip that you're going to need to uh, put in. But let's pretend we're moving the old one first. This is a new one, but we're going to use this now. <clears throat> I would suggest using a, a different type of pliers. This is uh, a cutter. And the reason I like to use a cutter for this is because it grabs onto this little... I like to go right over to this part here, right at the tip, right at the top here, okay? And I just grab what I can and pull outward, not, not heavily. Well, if you're replacing it, you can, but I want you to be gentle with it. I grab at various places, and then it will come out. <clears throat> so you can see this uh, replacement piece that you'll get with your kit is uh, quite delicate. And it's the most delicate piece within the module. And a lot of people could mangle this thing when you're putting it back in. That's why I want to show you this, okay? When you're putting this back in, or putting a new strip into your leg, the best thing to do is to, is to place it first in the middle. Press it down just a little here. And then work your way on either side. 
Now you may need <coughs> you may need to, a little help with a plier because it may not always line up. So I might just give a little bit of, a little bit of help with with the pliers to get it seated. <coughs> and again, we're working from both sides to try to get it to seat all the way in to the edge. Okay, once you've got it to the point where it is mostly in, uh, you can take just the back of a, a screwdriver or the side of a screwdriver, put it on a flat surface and just tap it in the rest of the way. I'm going to do that. <clears throat> okay, so now you've got the new one sitting flat inside the leg. And now it's just putting it back into place in the module. <coughs> okay, I've got it lined up, and I'm going to push it in. Top, grab, push, bottom, grab, and li line it up because it may not go in right away. Okay, so this one is not going in easily, and that's because we haven't fully... Uh, seated uh, the rings within this. Now I'm going to try. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on the video, but you see how where the silver rings on either side of the copper ring they have to seat fully into that copper strip. Okay, they're not. So what I do is I put this on a hold the module with this sitting flat on a table, and then put a flathead screwdriver in, and you're going to push down. Got it. Going to use quite a bit of pressure for this. I want. I'm going to do it. You won't see it on this uh, camera, but I'm going to. I want you to listen, because when I give it pressure, it's going to click. One sec. Okay, here's one. Did you hear that? Kind of. Okay. The other side. I come in and press down. Did you hear that click? That's. That's when you know it's it's seated properly. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, and this is the critical thing, and why a lot of people don't get this right, is because unless these four points touching the module, where the rings touch this copper strip, your performance won't be right. So we want to make sure that everything is sitting in there nicely. Um, now I can see that the top, that one looks pretty good, but the bottom piece, this one, that ring is not touching the strip. So what I'm going to do is, and part, part, it's partly because this leg's not all the way in yet, but I want to make sure it's lined up. And then, okay, can you see it? There it is right here. Not lined up. I'm going to try to push it with my hand again, see if this works better. Up. Oh, okay, that clicked in. This is the leg that I needed to get in, and it's lined up. But there's one additional thing to do. We got those, got the two one, the two ones here in nicely. We want to make sure that these ones on the ends are also nice. So take a, um, you could take a screwdriver, flathead, come in, in on these small rings, put it on the table, and push those in, just to make sure. Put a little pressure, make sure that they're sitting fully into the white leg with the copper strip and we do have that now okay after you've got everything back in place you put back in your ring set and you're done got that and then finally you put your clip through the top, have it hug onto the two rings that you slid in, and you've got your ring set, your module back together. All right, so uh, cleaning of the module is our next uh, item here. Let's just put a, a moment here. I'm going to grab the solution that we use. It's called CLR to find out where I put that bottle. One moment. <clears throat> All 
Okay, so uh, in case you have not used this, uh, you should be using this to clean your module. Uh, this is available in any supermarket, uh, Walmart, Target, you can get this. And you'll need a couple of bottles of these and use it full strength. Put it in a Tupperware container that would um, be big enough to submerge your module in from tip, uh, top to bottom. You don't want to have ex anything sticking out of the water. So, so this module will be fully submersed in CLR. Okay? A couple of bottles should be enough for a Tupperware container a little bigger than this module. And you'll have leftover, of course, so you can replenish it. Um, the, the key here is that uh, we're recommending full strength instead of diluted because it will do a better job of cleaning your module. Now what you need to do after each bath is to soak your module in that CLR solution for I would say a half hour to 40 minutes uh, is a good one, is a good middle ground. Some people could be shorter, some people longer, but uh, uh, that's a good, a good rule of thumb. And remember, you don't have to uh, replenish, get new bottles every time you do this. You're going to use that same solution for at least a year, I would say, okay? It depends on how much you use it. But if you find uh, that it turns from that light green color to a dark uh, murky color, you, you have to be the judge when it's time to replace uh, the solution. But what you're doing when, you, when you're done cleaning, cover up that Tupperware container un until the next time you need to use it, okay? Uh, one other uh, tip regarding this is don't um, leave your module soaking in solution all the time. If you leave it in for weeks at a time, guess what? You're eventually going to wear out the rings in your module. It is a cleaner, and over time, it, it will do a good job of cleaning away your rings, too. So um, it's, it's not a, uh, it's not a, a very uh, harsh uh, thing. It takes time for that to happen. That's why you put it in for a half an hour at a time. It's not going to be a problem. But uh, don't, don't uh, put it in your solution and come back three weeks later. You know, you're going to have to replace rings sooner than later if you do that. Okay? Uh, now, there are times when you find that uh, your performance doesn't seem to be as good as it, as it was. So we recommend then doing an overnight soak, 24 hours, in the solution to help clean out the contacts, especially in this area here. <clears throat> Where am I? the contacts that meet the rings here. It may look clean on the surface, but sometimes you need to do that deep cleaning for 24 to 48 hours in order to get a fresh start with your module. And the last uh, rule of thumb about cleaning is if you can see any brown deposits on your uh, white legs, uh, you probably need to be soaking your uh, module longer. You want it to come out with white legs, you know, so it's clean. Uh, that's the best judgment we can do in a visual inspection. And I think that is a good rule of thumb for everyone. Okay, so here's a tip regarding your uh, cable. Uh, your cable, every AquaTree cable has uh, a red and a black connector that connect to the top of the module. Occasionally we get calls where people say, you know, these uh, red and black connectors, they're very hot. What why are they heating up so much? Well, the reason is probably because there's dirt buildup inside this connector. And so that's what's causing the heat buildup. But it's a, it, there's an easy fix for this. All you need to do is take the tips of these cables overnight and put them in that CLR solution. Just like that. Not the whole cable, just the tips. You know, put them over the edge and let, let this part of the cable soak overnight. Uh, then take them out, dunk them in a fresh uh, glass of water or whatever, shake them and let them dry, and then you're back in business. It'll clean out all the dirt and oxidation inside those tips. So that's a cable tip. Hey, I'm going to bring back our uh, trusty uh, AquaChi power pack. And I'm going to answer the question, what is the most common reason that 
uh, you blow a fuse on the Aqua Chi. There's only two things that can cause you to blow a fuse, and I'm going to talk about those right now. They both have to do with the module. Okay. The first and most common reason is that uh, people, when they put the module in the water, they, they put, add too much salt to the water, and that causes that needle on the front of the machine to hop up over to the, the right, over to five, and it will blow a fuse in almost all cases if you have too much salt in the water. So the best way to avoid that is to start the bath with no salt in the water, put the module in the water, turn on the machine, then add salt sprinkles at a time, pinches at a time. Watch the meter rise on the front of the on the front of the unit, the meter will rise because it responds to conductivity in the water. If you do it gradually like that, you will never blow a fuse. Okay, Keep that in mind and you'll have a long happy life without having to change fuses. The other thing that can happen is that this clip can be installed the wrong way. Let's say I didn't have it quite installed on the rings. Well, it can touch other rings on the module, and that can create a condition where it causes a short. Okay, let me put it back on. Now this is properly installed. It's hugging the, the two rings that slide in and out of the module, and it's not touching any other rings. If I wanted to, if I wanted to manhandle this, I could push this in so it will touch another ring, but there's no need to do that. As long as you have it installed properly, it's not going to uh, blow a fuse or create a short. The one uh, time when you have to be concerned, probably, is when this uh, clip wears to the point be that it becomes very weak, it could actually uh, fall off. And if it does fall off during a bath, it could slide down and touch another ring that it's not supposed to. That can, that can blow a fuse. Much more rare, it's almost always the salt uh, content that will blow a fuse. But this is just for your knowledge. Okay. Checking for uh, our uh, tip list here. Mm. Needle stuck. Okay, so uh, the, la uh, the last tip, actually not the last tip, I have, have a couple of more. So the, uh, let's switch, which one, okay, so this one is, uh, you're trying to find out, let me do this here. I'm going to plug, turn on the machine. One moment. Okay, so you can see that our machine has the green light on. Now, a lot of times people get everything set up. They've got the module in the water. They've got it plugged in on the front of the machine, but the, uh, the meter is reading zero, even after they've added salt. Okay, the reason for that is because there's probably... Uh, either the ring set's not installed or that uh, there's a short in the cable. This is a pretty easy one because if you're getting a zero reading on the meter when everything else is on, it probably indicates that you need to try your other cable or you might need to replace a cable. Okay. The good news is that when your machine is on, it means it's functioning. And believe me, this machine here is, uh, is a Cadillac <laughs> as of the machines on the market. It's just built to last a lifetime. There, there's probably one in 10,000 that has to be returned due to uh, you know, some condition in it that had to be repaired. It's almost always things that you can take care of at your home or your business uh, that can, you, know, you can get past. So um, again, if you have a zero reading on your meter when everything is on and plugged in, it probably has to be a cable replacement. Okay? Quick tip for you there. All right, so the last, uh, the last two questions, uh, these don't require uh, a demonstration so much. In fact, let me, let me go ahead and put this stuff away. I'm going to move my camera a moment, just a sec. <clears throat> All 
Getting resituated, one moment. Okay. <laughs> okay, back in, in uh, place here. And uh, let me adjust this slightly. There we go. All right. So let me get back into our uh, panel here. Okay. So anyway, um, I think we pretty much covered everything that we need to cover today. And I'm hoping that everybody was able to see uh, everything and, and had some benefit. What I'm going to do is... Uh, just cover two more things that I didn't cover be earlier, and that is the um, we get two questions most often, and that is uh, what about the color of the water? You know, um, what does that mean? Uh, I did say earlier that there are color charts that are uh, very quite you know rampant on the internet, and uh, lots of interpretation is made of the color of the water. But in fact, you know, the color of the water it's not a good idea to try to interpret any kind of uh, organ or medical condition or anything with the color of the water. It's just not a reliable way to do it. Uh, over the years, what we've seen is that uh, there, there is a relation between the darkness of the water and the, the, the health disposition of a person. Um, so, and that, uh, that has to do with entirely different re uh, reasons than the color of the water. Uh, which I don't need to go into right now, but suffice it to say that uh, you can infer certain things with the shade of the water. <clears throat> the other question is, some people ask, why is it that in certain areas that the water color is uh, lighter and darker depending on geographic region? The reason there is because the, the water makeup uh, is radically different in different places in, uh, in the world. So uh, keep in mind that if you, for instance, uh, live or use your aqua chi uh, in an area that has well water or very pure water, it's very likely that you're going to have lighter water as a rule, okay? Uh, whereas if you're in a metropolitan area, you probably have more uh, pollutants, uh, particulates in the water perhaps. Uh, so those get acted upon during uh, a session. So you have to uh, take, the, take with a grain of salt the... Uh, uh, the color of the water that's based on the, uh, you know, the color of the water that you get in different areas, okay? Some people, they notice the, they, they've used the aqua chi in one area, then they move, and suddenly it's a, it's a different uh, shade, different color. Uh, yeah, that's true because it is a different area that you've moved to. Um, keep in mind that although the water could be lighter, as long as you've got the reading that you want, that's between probably two and a half and three on the meter, and the uh, uh, two, and a, two and a half and three on the meter, and you've got that bubbly, uh, that steamy bubbling happening around the module, that means that it is working, okay? So it's, it's not too, uh, it's not, you shouldn't be getting hung up so much on how much dark, you know, flakes do I have in the water? What's, you know, what's floating in the water? That's, that's all well and good, and there is, as I said, some inference that, uh, with that, um, but the electrical properties that are being transferred to the body are the most important consideration, okay? So I hope you found that uh, a, uh, satisfy a satisfactory answer to that question. It's kind of a, a big answer, but in any case, uh, we, we have been uh, online here for almost an hour and 45 minutes, and uh, I think at this point we've covered just about everything that I could possibly think that you might have a question on. That being said, I do want you to uh, email us at uh, client support at aquachifootbath.com. If you have any questions at all, please do that. Uh, there will be a replay of this webinar, and uh, you, you'll get a link to that if you have registered for it. Uh, if you also forget the email address, you can visit our site, aquachifootbath.com, and click the Ask a Question button right on the homepage. 
So I hope you have found uh, our, our live event uh, very educational and that you've uh, gotten a lot of questions that you might have answered. Uh, if you have any more, again, give us a call. Also, you can reach us at 800-349-6962. And uh, I'd like to ask if uh, Michaela has anything to add. Uh, you have to be unmuted. 